Hi, I'm Chad Carnahan, the beekeeper here at Bell Arbor, and uh, today we're going to open up the hive. It's been a long time since we've gone in there and uh, just sort of see where they are for fall. This is basically their final going in. Um, so in, going into the fall, there's a couple things that start, that start happening in the hive. The uh, drones, which were in the summertime, they would produce drones to basically reproduce their colony or to contribute to the genetic pool. Um, those are now sort of unwanted inside the hive because I call them frat boys. They don't do anything except try to mate with a virgin queen. That's their goal in life. At this point, that's no longer important. So the females will drag them out and out of the hive and bite their wings and lots of lovely stuff and basically kick almost all the drones out. They still will keep a few, but the queen can always make one whenever she wants them. So in winter, they don't want them because all they're going to do is eat honey, basically. Your colony is going to start decreasing. It's already decreased a lot in size and it'll be going into winter. And the bees that are emerging now will be like these winter bees. They basically will live through the whole winter and won't really come out of the hive except when it warms up a little to go to the bathroom and that sort of thing. But that's about it. And they'll basically just sort of live in there in a mass, keep the queen alive, keep her warm, and they'll eat their way up through the honey usually. So we just basically have to make sure there's enough honey on top. What I tend to do is we have four boxes here um, they should be down in this cluster they're probably about here but ideally they're gonna be down in here and this at least one of these should be full of honey so this top box should be full of honey and they'll also put honey down the sides all the way around so they basically insulate the sides of the box and they live in the middle and they'll kind of eat their way up and they can kind of eat their way across but um, uh, typically during the year you're when you're looking you're also always trying to figure out if there's a queen is she laying and all that that sort of thing at this point, I honestly don't, I don't really care. I, I do care. There's nothing I'm going to do. If there's not a queen, the, the colony will die. Um, and if there is, then hopefully they'll live. There's, there's really nothing I'm going to do in that sense. And it, I'm not going to rearrange their hives down there. I've learned a long time ago, even though it's only been a short period of time of doing it. Don't mess with it. They, they know what they're doing. I'm going to take this whole top box right off because I want to find out where they are. Give them a little smoke. There's no honey in there. That's way too light. I have to figure out where this brood chamber is. Okay. That's all honey. It's not all capped, but the bottom part's all liquid. So, yeah. so this right here is an emerging bee. It's trying to get its way out. It will basically chew around that edge, I believe, come out. From what I understand, I haven't really watched them that long, but they will, it takes a while. They'll come out, immediately clean their cell. And they're one of the few animals in, that when they emerge from this, they, they can fly. They're pretty much fully developed adults. Um, and like I said, at this point, this bee will probably live a couple months. In the summertime, they'll live up like six weeks. They'll work themselves to death. This bee won't work that much because there's nothing to gather. It'll basically stay inside the hive and kind of be a heater in, in a lot of ways. They'll keep the hive 93 degrees right around there all year, so they have to produce a, a lot of energy. Basically, these now, once they get full, they'll put these wax cappings on them. Once they cap it, it's honey and it It'll keep forever as long as it's not the, as long as the wax seal's not broken and moisture gets in. With the entrance, there's a block here that has two different sizes. There's a real wide side, a smaller notch, and then you, the third option is you take the whole entrance reducer. That's what that's called. Out. So typically, what I'll do um, in the winter time is I'll turn it to the smaller notch. You can see the outline there where it used to be. Um, I'll return it back to the smaller notch. Basically, it lets less cold air in. And the bees, also a smaller colony, can defend that little tiny opening. It makes it easier. Lift this back up. Tap that back in. So there they go. They have the smaller entrance. That still smells like home, though, so they're still trying to get in there. So they'll be good now, yeah. Once we put the top on there, I don't really need to feed them. They look like they're good. So um, I'll, I'll prop the top open also, like I have here. There's sort of, I keep ventilation in the winter a little bit. You don't want to close it down because you'll get condensation in the top. And that's what really does them in a lot of the times, that moisture. 
especially if it starts dripping on them or something. From now on, I just sort of watch the door. You kind of just look for bees and hopefully they're still there. Um, but, but basically, if you get like a 40 degree day around here and you don't see any bees coming, that's a bad sign. But, but they should be good till uh, March at this point.